Welcome to the show. Thank you. I'm glad to be here. Congratulations on the book. <laughs> Thank you. Um, I, I have so much to ask you about here. Uh, um, there's a lot of different topics in this book. Murder that needs to be solved. It's, it's occasionally a very funny book. And I want to talk about all that in a minute, but I want to talk about the switch. So uh, I, know, I know you so well as a performer. I also know that you wrote uh, many of the sketches that you performed. I also know, I remember your show uh, in 2003, the, the Mary Walsh open book. Um, but what went from wanting to perform to wanting to be an author? What was the moment where you said, I, I got a book in me? Well, you know, I never wanted to be a performer. Right. I always wanted to be a novelist. Mm -hmm. I, you know, somebody said, why not an autobiography? I'm not really interested in writing an autobiography anyway. But, um, but why, I, why now? Well, I guess I really now is because, you know, and it's an old saying. Many people have said it before me, but if not now, when? Right. And so you can't go on your whole life longing to do something and never have the guts to do it. Yeah. If you And so I just did because I thought, well, and even now when I look at the book, I think, well, whatever happens, it's all right. At least I did it. I'm not always going, you know, like every time the Giller Prizes would be announced, I go, oh. And then I, I, I kind of shake myself and go, of course, you have to write the yeah. book first before you get the prize. I mean, it helps. Yeah, it helps. helps. It really yeah, does. Yeah. They, they never even gave me a nod. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? With all the longing <laughs> I had. Say, to. They didn't say, if Mary Walsh released a book, I'm sure she would have gotten on. I'm sure she would have gotten on the long list, yeah. at least. <laughs> but, uh, but so, you know, all that longing and all that... Um, Struggling and all that, you know, um, I, I hate to say bitterness because bitterness is too strong a word, but all that resentment that others are doing things that you want to do and you don't do it and you just go on and on like that. And then finally you hit a sort of place where, you know, the other things in my life weren't going. I wasn't getting a lot of work at that point uh, as an actor and I couldn't get anything produced and stuff. And I had this, uh, these, you know, this writing that I'd done and I took it to my agent and we took it to HarperCollins and and uh, so I'm sure if I hadn't been doing so badly mm -hmm. I probably would never have gotten the courage to do it but I'm really really glad now that I did when you find out that Mary Walsh, this acclaimed humorist, this very, very funny person, wrote a book, I think there's some kind of expectation that this was going to be a book of humor and a book of satire. And I should mention that I I laughed for two very distinct reasons in this book. One, because some of the dialogue was just very funny. Others, because I just recognized, I know that guy. Yeah, yeah, I, yeah. I, I grew up next, I, my, my, my uncle's that guy. I know, <laughs> I know that guy. You could have written a, a humor and, or a satire book and it would have been very expected. But as we just said, these are about very serious, very complex topics. Why did you decide to go this route in your first novel? I don't think I decided to go this route. I think this was the book that was there. And, uh, you know, it um, it was the book that was... Uh, that was kind of waiting to be written. It's so typically a first novel, isn't it, uh, in a way, uh, except that usually you're not 65 by the time you get to it. Mm -hmm. um, so, um, you know, I wrote out of my, uh, to a certain degree, not, not that my experience is the same as Maureen's, but I was surrounded by that, that the experiences that were somewhat the same as Maureen's. And... Um, so I wrote from my experience. I wrote from what I knew. You felt no pressure to write something that seemed like the, the on brand for Mary Walsh? No. No. No, I didn't really. It didn't occur to me. You know, sometimes like people go, you're so brave. And I go, no, stupid. Because yeah. it doesn't occur to me that this will be, uh, you know, that this could be trouble. I think, no, no, let's do this. This will be good. Well, this is what you and I were talking about before we came <laughs> in. Because I said, I don't, I don't understand. I, I'm, I'm only beginning to understand just how brave it was for you to be part of Cogco and to, and to write those sketches in, in, in at a time when you were taking on the church and you were taking on the government in Newfoundland at a time where no one was doing that. And you guys were kids and you were doing that. And you said something like that. We weren't brave, Tom. We just didn't know any better. Yeah, that's yeah. right. You know. <laughs> if you're listening to this right now uh, and you hear Mary Walsh talk about Cogco, you, you might know Cogco from the CBC TV show that was that was on nationally. But, I mean, Cogco to, to Newfoundlanders, I mean, you guys were Monty Python. I mean, you guys were the most – you guys were not only the most important comedy influence in the history of the of the of the island, but also a very very brave one. And we touched on this a little bit earlier, but I want to ask it in this context. When Joel Thomas Hines came in to talk about his book, "We'll All Be Burnt in Our Beds Some Night," <laughs> yes. what is it that you like? What is it that you you want to do to talk about some of the darker aspects of Newfoundland culture throughout your throughout your career that perhaps isn't put into the tourism commercials? Well, you know, I mean, in 1952. You know, we just come, we gave up the right to self-government, you know, when there was a time in the 30s when everybody was questioning democracy. The Italians gave it up, the Germans gave it up, and the Newfoundlanders gave it up. Mm -hmm. We went in, uh, as, uh, with a British protectorate. And so there was a lot of shame 
you know, when you were, and, and then you came up to Toronto and people just laughed, died laughing just because you said you were from Newfoundland. And uh, so, you know, and you, and you felt, and Joy was always saying he was grabbing, dragging you, kicking and screaming out of the 19th century and into the 20th mm-hmm. and exto- exhorting you yeah, to burn putting, your boats and burn everything that you putting, believed in. Uh, building hockey stick factories and putting bisons on rocks. Yeah, yes, yeah. bisons on rocks. Yeah. That's my favorite. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, so there was a period of time that we, when we were coming up, you know, that... Um, we started to try to take some pride in who we were, despite the fact that nobody, like we always said, you know, Canadians were asking the big question, like, who are we? You know, and when we were traveling around Canada with Codco, we always knew who the Canadians were. There, the crowd would thought they were so much effing better than we were, yeah. right? You know, it, was not, it wasn't hard to tell who was a Canadian. But um, um, so, and Newfoundlanders always knew who they were. There was no question of that. I guess that's an island thing. It's not just Newfoundland. But uh, we always knew who we were, but we were never sure what our worth was. I guess at some point when we were feeding the world, mm-hmm. when we were the major, providing the major protein for the world, we must have felt. But by the time I came along, we really had no, like much like poor old Maureen, we had no sense of self-worth at all. Mm-hmm. And now that the, the lifelong journey has has concluded and you, have the, and you have the book I'm out. I'm only 65. Well, I'm sorry, the l- lifelong art. Artistic career path oh. has come to its natural uh, next point. Yes, that's yes. That's pretty good. Yeah, okay, I mean, that's yeah, good. That's, that's good. We'll keep me yeah, around yeah. a few more weeks. Yeah. Uh, is there another book in you? Well, I have some short stories that, mm-hmm. uh, you know, I'm thinking about. And, uh, you know, um, I don't know. You know, I, I, I have no idea. I, I don't have the answer to that. But I do have some short stories. So ever since the book actually got published on the 18th, I've been thinking about them. And they need a lot of work. And, uh, you know, it big uh, rewrite and stuff like that, but it might be worthwhile, you know, drawing, pulling them out. It's not so scary. Not, no, uh, not yet. Well, we'll wait and we'll see what the crowd from the Globe and Mail say. You we'll know. See. Mary, thanks for coming in. Tom, thank you for having me. Come back. <laughs> I will. Whenever you want.